Welcome to the second part of the VxRail Deployment Flexibility Series. Today, we'll continue our discussion with two-node clusters. Typically, the smallest cluster you can build is a three-node cluster. However, two-node clusters are another deployment option available to VxRail customers. Their footprint is one-third smaller than a standard VxRail and vSAN cluster, which makes this an excellent deployment option for remote and branch office sites. Two-node clusters require a witness. This witness can either be a physical host or a virtual machine at a third site. This deployment type supports the same automated lifecycle management and continuously validated states as other VxRail clusters with vSAN use. A strong argument for two-node clusters is that they can deploy high-performance compute resources outside the traditional data center. This is possible because although two-node clusters can be connected through a switch, they also support a high-speed, low-latency direct connection option. This direct connection not only allows the cluster to perform very quickly, it presents a cost-saving opportunity because clients can connect back to the cluster using the existing network infrastructure. From the outset, Two-node cluster was launched with full support for all VxRail models. And more recently, it also supports the VxRail VD4000 enclosure. This enclosure is available in two different sizes. If your VD4000 is deployed with 1U nodes, the enclosure is similar in size to a large shoebox that can be stacked or even wall-mounted. There is another larger enclosure. It can use both 1U and 2U nodes. This enclosure is larger and offers higher performance, though it is not wall-mounted. Regardless of size choice, the VD4000 supports an optional embedded hardware witness, allowing these two-node cluster deployments to be entirely self-contained. All two-node clusters can be deployed with Dell's standard ProDeploy service. The ProDeploy service provides full-service installation and configuration of both hardware and software by certified deployment engineers. Let's pivot back towards two-node deployments with standard nodes. I mentioned before that two-node clusters require a witness. This witness can be shared with up to 64 clusters in total, further lowering OPEX and technical costs while continuing to reduce the infrastructure footprint. Each of the clusters must be running vSphere 7.0 U1 or later. The clusters can be running different versions as long as this minimum version is met. Upgrading the witness does require further guidance, so be sure to review the release notes or seek guidance from VxRail support before upgrading the witness. It's also worth noting that a two-node cluster cannot be stretched between different sites. Support for two-node clusters helps promote operational flexibility by making it possible to deploy compute resources in a greater range of locations. There are some important requirements to keep in mind, though. The clusters need to be running vSphere 7.0 U1 or later but are not required to be running the same versions. Because upgrading the witness is slightly more nuanced, carefully reviewing the documentation prior to a witness upgrade is recommended. And bear in mind that a two-node cluster cannot be stretched across sites. Two-node clusters maintain data resiliency when a host or witness becomes unavailable by mirroring data and adding witness components on each host. If a node were to go down for some reason, the remaining node serves as a failover, ensuring that workload service can continue, thanks to the data being mirrored across the nodes. This does require three disk groups and the associated cache drives for three default domains in an OSA deployment. This applies to both two-node and stretched VxRail clusters. That direct connection I mentioned between the two nodes is a high-performance configuration option that doesn't necessarily require upgrading the network infrastructure. 
This connection is used for vSAN and vMotion traffic. Separating witness traffic from management and vSAN traffic is mandatory. The first run workflow built into VxRail helps ensure that this is configured properly. When connecting nodes directly, you can choose between dual 10 GB or 25 GB links for vSAN and vMotion. 1 GB links can be used for management, witness, and VM network traffic. Direct connections allow for easily deployable high-performance clusters that can use existing switch infrastructure for less demanding services, offering further cost savings. In the case of a VD4000, the witness can also be embedded. As for vCenter, if you're on a VxRail release older than 7.0.4.10, an additional host located at another site will host it. Two-node clusters bring a lot of additional flexibility to your deployment options. Whether you need small clusters in your data center or out in your retail, branch office, or edge locations, VxRail two-node clusters can help you bring compute power everywhere you need it, while keeping management nice and simple. Until then, take care.